Protests, counter-protests, and a cycle which shows no sign of slowing down. The 17th week of protests against the controversial judicial reforms were preceded by the largest pro-judicial reforms rally on Thursday, with a reported 200,000 supporters of Benjamin Netanyahu's government convening in Jerusalem. And the Netanyahu government is in for a busy week, as Sunday marks the reopening of the Knesset summer session. Whilst the government will try and push through some type of judicial reform, the priority now will be an attempt to pass a one trillion shekel budget, which needs to be finalised before the end of the month, or else, not for the first time, a Netanyahu government will be dissolved by a lack of a budget. But Simcha Rotman, head of the Knesset's Law Committee, has said that the coalition's survival depends on judicial reform. So, with Netanyahu stuck between the rock of the judicial reforms and the hard place of the budget, which one should he prioritise? And is there any scenario in which he can appease everyone, or is Israel destined to head to the polls yet again? Will the judicial protests, both pro and anti-reform, make a difference, or just further the societal rifts? What's next for Israel's judicial reforms? So let's get to it. What's next for the uh, judicial uh, reforms here in Israel? Uh, you know how we roll here, uh, gentlemen. A quick fire round, 30 seconds each to wake up uh, your uh, initial stuns, and we'll pick it up uh, from there. So, uh, Douglas uh, to Beth, please uh, take the lead. Your 30 seconds are on. Sure. Well, look, of course they're going to have to prioritize the budget because there is a legal restraint on not passing the budget. That doesn't mean that uh, judicial reform is uh, backburnered. Uh, it, it means that there has to be some common sense of a priority. The event last Thursday was a game changer. And what it was was both a hug to the nation, a hug to the idea of reform, and a stiffening of the spine uh, of the, the government to make sure that they follow through and carry out the mandate of the people. Well, a hug or a bear hug, we will unpack it uh, in a split second. Samuel Hyde, your take. Well, I think as we reach the point where we're at now, we're not obviously sure exactly which direction it's gonna head, but I think what has happened in of late is that the actions of the government and the way things have gone have displayed an inherent weakness in the Knesset as a body, hmm. as a check on government power. So if we are looking, it's quite clear that, that over the years there's been support for some form of moderate judicial reform. So it does beg the question as to why the government advanced in the manner in which it did. Hmm. Um, I think that that lives within the 140 other bills that the government tried to pass, that has tried to has proposed legislation-wise. But I think that essentially what we need to do is we need to look at strengthening the Knesset and balancing the tension between the branches. Not necessarily the what, but the how. Uh, Gil Hoffman, your your thoughts? I spent time briefing the Moody's credit agency, and they decided not to lower Israel's credit rating, but to put it in purgatory. And by saying that uh, right now it's going down from positive to stable, which means that the government, if it would try to force a reform that the majority of the people don't want, uh, they would lower our credit rating. And if they pass by consensus, then they'll bring us back from stable to positive in the horizon. And so that's what Netanyahu is going to try to do. That's what he says he's going to do. And Isaac Herzog can reach the kind of compromise that would enable that to happen. Yeah, stable never uh, sounded so shaky. Last but not least, uh, Jeremy Sultan, your thoughts? After three months from January to March of us seeing the circus that was the Constitution Committee in the Knesset, the entire debate when it comes to the reform went behind closed doors in the president's residence. I think every Israeli should wish luck for the president and the teams of both sides. Yeah, last month uh, over the recess, the main thing was the committees dealing with the budget. That's going to be this month, too. We're not going to see a lot of stuff going through the reforms, particularly because the circus of the Constitution Committee is over and we're behind closed doors. Let's hope that it stays behind closed doors and we don't see constant links to the media and that they're able to come to some sort of conclusion. Okay, gentlemen, let's feel uh, free to interact from this point uh, onwards. Uh, uh, Gil Hoffman, I do want to begin uh, with you and with what uh, uh, Douglas mentioned in his opening remarks, those uh, um, pro-judicial uh, reform protests uh, we've seen uh, short days ago. Um, were they for or against Benjamin Netanyahu to an extent? A hug or a bear hug? 
That depends on what Netanyahu wants to do, and uh, what he is, says is not necessarily an indication of what he will do. Uh, but right now, it's making. He said in the cabinet today there are different views, uh, and when he said that, I don't know if he was referring to different views among the people or different views within the cabinet. Um, I think that in the end, uh, he will not want to do as extensive uh, a or as fast-paced a uh, reform as the people at that protest wanted. He will want to do a, a much smaller reform that a consensus of people of Israel want, and the, the justice minister and all the people protesting will have to accept that because uh, things are different now than they were back then. Uh, when Netanyahu just won an election with 64 seats and thought he could get away with anything. Now the polls show mm -hmm. 70 seats for the opposition and uh, began as the candidate that a majority of the people of Israel see as the most fitting candidate to be prime minister and not Netanyahu, that creates a, a spirit yeah. of him needing to tell his coalition partners that compromise must happen. Douglas? Yeah. Uh, Samuel, I, please. Uh, yeah, I think that's super important what Gil's brought up because there, is, there does tend to be this narrative of the will of the people among mm -hmm. supporters of judicial reform. But I think ever since the government has advanced the reform in the measures which it did, they've consistently across polls from the left to the right as well as research institutes plummeted in the polls, as well as the state is witnessing large protests across, across the spectrum, but particularly at the anti-government protests are, are 17 weeks in mm -hmm. and there's hundreds of thousands of people. So when this, when this idea that the, it's the will of the people for the reform, sure, there's, there's support among the vast majority of Israelis for moderate reform, but specifically uh, not not in line with the way in which this government has approached it. And that's, as as Gil points out, that's clearly evident in, in yeah. the polls and the figures. A reform, not this reform. Douglas? Well, I, I'm not sure that most people who say I'm in favor of reform but not this one could define what it is that they really want. I think it's very clear I think the prime minister has signaled. I think people, uh, I think even uh, Senator Rockman has signaled, signaled that there will be compromise. Uh, there's a prioritization of what needs to be really focused on from the point of view of the reformers. And I think that the judicial election process is the sine qua non of the uh, proposals. And I think you will see a tremendous focus on that going forward. But I don't think that, that uh, the idea of compromise is uh, that controversial at this point. Jeremy, what could be a non-controversial compromise at this point in time? Look, it depends on the issue. Uh, we know that the, the issue the coalition started with of the panel to select judges seems to be the area in which there's the most contention between the opposition and the coalition. But if we are going to go ahead and listen to the voices and really the statements coming out from both coalition and opposition parties when it comes to the other aspects of the judicial reform, we see the gaps are really not that far. I mean, there are gaps that are definitely there. But they're not so large. They're not at a point that I would say would be um, too hard to be able to bridge under this month that we have. While the budget is the main issue in the headlines, this is the right time to be able to deal with this stuff while it is sort of on the back burner. Yeah, before we get to the troubles of the coalition, if you will, on the opposition side of things, uh, Samuel Hyde, um, if a compromise is reached, does it necessarily mean protests are, are going to to stop? You know, I think that obviously there's there's a there's a broad you know perspective within within the protest, but there's also people from across the spectrum that are there. There's kind of been this 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 rhetoric that it's a, that's a group of leftists, which is just not the case. Yeah. Um, I think what people have have maybe failed to to reconcile with is that there's something deeper at stake going on here, and that has to do, as I spoke about the 140 bills proposed by this government. If you look at a lot of them, they're all about instilling ultra orthodox and religious Zionist values. Proposed prison centres for modest at the Western Wall, um, you know, uh, gender separate swimming hours at, at springs and parks. I think that there is a division that had been brought to the surface by an irresponsible government, but I think that it's a division that has existed within Israeli society. It's, a, it's, a, it's congealed among Israeli society, the essence and the fabric of the state, and I think this government has brought that to the surface. Whether or not they will stop when, they, when, a, when, a, when a compromise is reached, I cannot personally say. Yeah. But I do think that it is important to acknowledge that the, these, these arguments go beyond essentially right. just the particular reform. And if we view it through that lens, well, we're not really understanding the, the, the social fabric issue. 
Yeah, and and to that point, uh, on the flip side, if you will, Gil Hoffman, uh, you know, the budget, the draft bill, the judicial reform, you know, choose your trigger. Uh, bottom line, is Israel destined to go to the polls once again, or or in other terms, is another election imminent? Could the coalition survive all these troubles? Well, I'm not going to make a prediction as to how the government will last, yeah. but I can say from past experience is that um, what's happened is when a government is seen as popular, the parties in it have an interest in initiating mm -hmm. elections in order to receive a greater mandate from the people. When a government is seen as, uh, as weak and unpopular and they're doing poorly in the polls, that makes the, the parties in it want the current government to last as long as possible. And so that's the way it works in our political system. The worse the government is seen as doing by the polls, the longer it lasts. Yeah. And uh, that uh, it bodes well for Netanyahu. Yeah, the uh, political game theory, if you will. Douglas Elbeff, uh, uh, do you think Netanyahu will be uh, posed uh, with an ultimatum of sort uh, from his coalition members? Look, I, I, it may not make great theater, but I find myself in agreement with both what Sammy has <laughs> said and what Gil said. Um, uh, I think he'll hit the, the, the nail on the head. There's no motivation to break up this coalition by a Ben Veer who may, you know, posture, because he knows that based on the poll, he's, he's not going to return to power. Uh, and so there, I, I don't think this government is in imminent danger of failing, precisely because of what Gil said, that these guys knows that uh, they're not that popular now, and they have every reason to keep themselves together. As far as what Samuel said, he's right that the pro, uh, the anti-reform is a is not about judicial. It is about deeper issues, existential issues that were opened up, a wound, as it were, or a Pandora's box by these proposals. And I'll tell you, on Thursday night, what I saw was the focus of the pro-reform, he's just on reform. These are not people who are worried about Israel staying a Jewish state. Of course, it's going to be a Jewish state. Yeah. They're worried about not being treated like second-class citizens, that the government follows through with judicial reform. Yeah. I think Samuel is right that on the other side of things, there are some deeper issues. Yeah, you can only run a certain distance uh, from your uh, problem. Uh, Jeremy Sultan, in the uh, very short time, we have left 20 seconds. Uh, wrap it up for us uh, before we uh, take a break and get back to the conversation. I remember MK Zawabi from Meretz and MK Ranim from Ra'am not acting as rational actors and toppling the last government. Meretz no longer exists in Knesset. Ram is in the opposition. So let's not pretend that every member of the coalition is necessarily a rational actor. And on that note, gentlemen, we are taking a short uh, break, but uh, we will continue to unpack the uh, current and future state of the Israeli state right after, so don't go anywhere. We're back in a bit. Welcome back to the summit, still with us, Jeremy Sultan, uh, Douglas Eldbeff, uh, Gil Hoffman, and Samuel Hai. Thanks, gentlemen, for sticking with us. We're also staying on topic, of course, but before we get back to our conversation, if there weren't enough opinions inside Israel, global leaders are becoming increasingly vocal, if you will, about the state of democracy here in Israel. So let's take a listen to the Spanish Prime Minister, uh, Pedro Sanchez. Dear Israeli friends, we as Socialist International have always fought for freedom, equality, justice, and democracy. Yet, as many of you already know, these are values that we cannot take for granted and that we have to promote and defend on a daily basis. As such, now as always, the Socialist International stands in solidarity with the people of Israel. Dear friends, you will always find us in the fight for democracy. Okay, let's get to it. Interference or intervention? Uh, should foreign leaders uh, get involved in Israel's domestic uh, affairs? Another quick fire round, 30 seconds each, and we pick it up uh, from there. Jeremy Salton, take the lead, please. I think that it's fine for foreign leaders to have an opinion. And also, when you're among friends, you can also choose to share that opinion. The problem that I have is with Israeli leaders who then go and seek out foreign leaders to go ahead and comment on Israeli domestic issues. If you have a problem, know how to work within the Israeli arena. Don't go outside 
as we've seen during Jewish history, going outside to others to try to deal with our internal problems does not always end great for the Jewish nation. Samuel Hyde. I mean, I agree with Jeremy, interestingly enough, on that. Uh, the, the, the thing that I will say is that, you know, there's a, there's a big difference between interference and intervention. Right. Obviously, I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with, for example, that video of him sending his support to the people of Israel. Um, the, the, the problem comes in exactly in what, what Jeremy has said, but it, is, it, it does tend to be this a slightly hypocritical stance because it is very much Netanyahu who, who very much intervened in the American political system when he went and gave a speech in 2016. So so he seems to be opposed to people intervening in his own domestic affairs, but he has no problem intervening in the domestic affairs of others, which, which is interesting in and of itself. Uh, Douglas Altobeth, uh, your thoughts? Okay. Right. Okay. First of all, Samuel's wrong. That wasn't interesting. Secondly, there is absolutely no place for foreign government intervention or interference. My organization, Imchir Tzu, has documented over the years the rampant use of foreign governments to support anti-Israeli NGOs as a backdoor way of trying to influence uh, foreign policy here. It's a terrible practice, and it is one that we should be uh, adamantly opposed to. Um, and and the, what Netanyahu did was not to interfere okay. with American. Uh, yeah. Last but not uh, least, Gil Hoffman. I just want to clarify without taking an opinion here that Sanchez was not talking in his role as the, in the Spanish government, but as the head of the Socialist International, which is a uh, group of left-wing parties around the world. And the President Biden speaking uh, against the reform was a lot more serious. I think he can do that as the leader of the free world. Um, other countries interfering in Israeli politics is probably more problematic. Right. And in this respect, perhaps uh, worth noting noting that uh, Israeli uh, Foreign Minister Eli Cohen uh, um, also did not criticize uh, Sanchez's video, but rather the uh, use of uh, protesters, uh, if you will, uh, um, th their use of, uh, of the video. Um, and let's uh, feel free uh, to engage in a conversation now, uh, gentlemen. Bottom line is the judicial overhaul debate, okay, harming Israel's global standing, Samuel? Uh, well, I mean, that obviously depends where you look at it. I think like we've, we've spoken about earlier that we've, we're obviously at a crossroads as, yeah. as a country, but we have reached this point where it is fair to assume that we're not going to be advancing with the initial radicalism of the, of the version advanced by the government. As I said earlier, I can't predict what's, what's going to happen. Yeah. All I can say is I can just offer my kind of view on this and I can just say that I think at the end of the day, if, um, if we are to, we essentially need to be um, enhancing the power of the Knesset, that we cannot be stri stripping away any power from, from uh, adding power to the Supreme Court, adding power to the government. Essentially, it needs to be focused the parliamentary system at uh, in, uh, essentially strengthening the parliament. Yeah. And, uh, and that this government has displayed inherent weakness there. So I think that if there are going to be negotiation talks and there's going to be something positive coming of it, I do personally hope that that is the direction that they will look to take it. Yeah, but but Douglas, you know, again, the smear debate, uh, heated debate um, uh, uh, here within Israel is not uh, hailed or celebrated as as a democratic feast uh, for foreign eyes. Well, of course, it, it's profoundly democratic. All these disagreements, and Samuel's point about strengthening the Knesset is exactly what these reforms are about. When you have legal advisors who are basically many. Martinet dictators in their respective ministries were not accountable, were not chosen by the minister, were not giving opinions, but they are giving edicts. That's not democratic. You can go down the list and, and, and say that those things that the opposition fears are threats to democracy are profoundly uh, uh, undemocratic in and of themselves. In other words, that the opposition is espousing a juristocracy is espousing uh, dictatorial uh, mandates given to legal advisors. And yes, let's strengthen the Knesset. Let's strengthen the sovereignty of the people by having reforms where the Knesset is more involved. And the judiciary is not a self-perpetuating terrarium of judges who are just selecting people who are just like themselves. Yeah, uh, Gil Hoffman, allow me to ask a provocative question. Who, who benefits from a compromise politically? Not talking about Israeli citizens or the well-being of Israeli society. Politically speaking. 
We've seen in the polls that Benny Gantz's party advances uh, what they call in Hebrew, which is a word that's almost impossible to translate into English. And it's a combination of, of statesmanship uh, and professionalism, um, and uh, he is seen right now as doing that, and that's why the polls show that, that uh, the people of Israel find him to be a more fit leader than uh, Netanyahu. Uh, and Netanyahu and Lapid have both been harmed. But to answer also the question from before yeah. um, uh, about uh, the way Israel looks, and as the head of honest reporting, which fights for Israel in the international mainstream and social media, when the Palestinians and their supporters tried to hijack our uh, legal reform question and make it about them, that is something that did harm to us. When it looks like we're going to be reaching a consensus that proves the strength of our democracy, that ends up helping. Jeremy. Yeah, I, I think that really when we're thinking of Israel, we want to think of Israel as just Israel. When we're looking at America here in Israel, we're not looking at the problems between the Republicans and the Democrats. We're looking at America, likewise with UK, with the Tories and Labour and Lib Dems and etc. I think it's very important when the opposition leaders go abroad that they think about that fact that Israel needs to be put as Israel and forget about whatever given government happens to be in office at this time or another. And I think that really connects the two aspects of the previous segment and this segment, and that is that there is a certain responsibility, there's a certain amount of statesmanship like that we are looking for from all of our uh, members, and that of course also goes in the coalition as well, since we know there are many members there who really should think about those things and take those messages home. Yeah, Samuel Hyde, wrap it up for us. I, th I think I completely agree with that last part. It is, it is essentially for me. This government has displayed irresponsible leadership from the from the get go. I think that the opposition have done the same in, in some of the ways in which they've handled uh, a certain certain scenarios. So I think that that's uh, that's 100 percent correct. And I actually think this conversation, in many ways, is a perfect description of the fact that there is a broad consensus among Israeli society when it comes to these kind of issues. When it comes to judicial reform, there's a lot that it seems that we actually agree upon. Um, so to sum it up, I think that um, essentially uh, I hope that this this government leads forward in a way that's better for all the people of the state of Israel, yeah. not for individual parties. The clear consensus uh, that the current state of affairs is uh, not long-lasting, uh, nor should it.